Hi, and welcome to the NERPG 0.14a New Features Demo. In this video, I will be demonstrating the major new content and features of the NERPG 0.14a release. There will be timestamp links in the video comments, so if you're interested in a specific feature, you can skip right to that part of the video. If you don't already have a copy of NERPG, you can pick one up from nerpg.org slash downloads and that comes in both a full Unity package format as well as the GitHub source code now in its own organization at github.com slash nerpg slash nerpg core. If you download the full Unity package, you will get a couple of extra icons and prefabs, but one of the major enhancements in this version is that the majority of the most useful content is actually now on GitHub. GitHub version now contains more than 50% of the icons and nearly 70% of the terrain that's included, as well as 60% of the weapons and more than 90% of the template packages that you would find in the full Unity package. So GitHub as a standalone option is considerably more useful now. Let's go ahead and get started with the demo. First, there is a bunch of new content available, and this content is included on GitHub. I will now demonstrate it. There's a modular character package, which includes over 60 different variations of human female and human male heads and clothing. So you can see this is all coming from a single character with just has a swappable head or swappable clothing options, including armor of different types, aprons and clothing of different types. We've got a mage variation here and a rogue variation, and then a bunch of different options for the males as well. There are a number of different weapon variations included in this version for the basic weapon set. So you can see we've got bronze, copper, gold, silver, iron, and steel variations of all of the basic weapons that are now included, as well as several medieval kits. So we have a new medieval crafting stations kit, which includes a alchemy workbench, a blacksmithing forge, and a cooking cauldron. We've got a medieval props kit, which just has a bunch of different furniture and props, as well as a medieval tavern props kit, which includes things that you would commonly find in a tavern, and a medieval buildings kit, which includes several different types of buildings, structures, and even a few trees and such, as well as buildings with animated doors, large and small buildings, and a couple of different types of animated gates as well. Next up, let's take a look at the new updated features demo game. To do that, we can go to the welcome window and just click on features demo game. The features demo game has been completely redesigned to include all of this new medieval kit content as the features demo game is available on GitHub. Let's load up our characters and take a look at the new content and features available. First, the wand is now available as a weapon and your character can equip that weapon and basically use it like they would any other melee weapon. So you can see here, I'm now using the wand and casting wand energy at my enemy here. If anybody ever played the old World of Warcraft, I'm sure you fondly remember running out of magic or out of mana and having to wand your enemies to death. So now you can relive your World of Warcraft glory days wanding enemies inside of any RPG. 
This is the new dungeon that is available in the features demo game, and it's taking advantage of a bunch of these new prefabs as well. And we've got a new type of animated switch here included that actually moves, as well as an animated gate, some new different portals that you can travel through. Next up, let's take a look at the crossbow abilities. The crossbow is available as a weapon, so let's load up our ranger who has a crossbow. And then we'll just spawn an enemy here and head inside and start shooting at him by right clicking on him and you can see we are now holding the crossbow and shooting arrows at the enemy. There's also a new type of ability, a penetrating shot here, and that penetrating shot does more damage than usual because it actually absorbs, or sorry, ignores the uh, armor of the enemy. There is also a thief class available. Let's take a look at that now. For the Thief class, the Stealth has been added, allowing our character to basically become invisible, and a new positional ability called Backstab, as well as the abilities that require Stealth, such as this Sneak Attack, are now available in the game as well. So let's go ahead and just spawn an enemy here. And since we are stealthed, we can run right up to this enemy here. And they're not going to notice us until we actually perform an attack and come out of stealth. And so I'm going to hit the sneak attack to basically just do a extra damage on them. And then I'm going to stun them for a second. And then now that they're stunned, I can run behind them and do the... Oh, could have run behind them and done the backstab if I'd actually managed to pull that off quick enough, but you can also pull off the backstab from inside of stealth as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other things that are available. There are now chat commands available, so you can type, for example, slash dance, and your character will start dancing. This can be used not only for actions for your character, but it can be used for things like cheat codes as well. So let's head over to the other side of the level here, where I can demonstrate some of these cheat codes. Let's say, for example, that I wanted to buy something, but I didn't have enough money for it. So we'll head into the Tailor's Guild here, and we'll look at the tailoring supplies list here and let's say I wanted some legendary cloth armor but these cost a hundred gold and I have zero gold so what I can do is I can type slash gain gold and give myself say a thousand gold and now you can see that I have a thousand gold in my inventory this works for items as well so I can type slash gain item medieval shield and now you see that I have a medieval shield which has shown up in my inventory as well. Similarly, if I want to gain a level, I can type slash gain XP and just give myself a thousand XP here and you'll see that my level will go from two all the way up to five because that was a whole lot of XP. In addition, when you talk to AI characters, notice how this tailoring trainer is facing away from me. If I click on her to talk to her, then she will turn around and face me now as well. And that just adds a little bit more interactivity to the game. Items also now have tool tips. So if I go over to say, for example, my cooking supplies vendor here, and you can see that when I mouse over it, there is a yellow... Actually, let's just buy some food here for a second. 
completely cooked and eat me, it shows up better in the inventory. There we go. You can see that there's a yellow text now showing actually the description of the item. And there's also a new fishing pole prefab included in the GitHub repository and the Unity package. You can see that instead of using a baseball bat like I was in previous versions, I'm now using a fishing pole. And if I take the fish and hover over it, you can see that it smells fishy. There's a lot of other stuff in the new features demo game, but I will let you explore that all on your own. It basically includes all of the new medieval kit prefabs. Another new feature and a big one is the wizards that have been updated including the template content wizards and basically about 90 percent of the content that you can find here in the features game can be installed through a template content wizard in your own game and i'll just demonstrate how easy that can be to make a new game using these new wizards so let's go ahead and do that I'll go to Tools, NERPG, Wizard, and I will make a new game using the New Game Wizard. The game name, we'll just call that Test Game, and we'll call it Test Scene for the first scene. For the main menu music, I will just choose anything, cheerful xylophone here, and for the new game music, I'll choose this secret to tell you, and for the first scene ambient sounds, I'll choose a dungeon cave ambient sound, and then for the background music, we can choose a cave mysterious melody, and I will go ahead and click on create, leaving all of the other options in place. Now, what the new game wizard is doing is it is going ahead and creating a new game manager and a new structure for my game, as well as creating the new level for me, and then setting up audio profiles and scene nodes with the proper audio files linked for them. It's also installing the gold, silver, and copper currencies, the leather armor cloth armor and plate armor armor classes, character stats like stamina, intellect, intelligence, as well as item qualities like rare, common, epic, etc. Power resources like health, mana, rage, and energy, different unit toughnesses that allow us to set uh, like a boss toughness with double the hit points or strength, and weapon skills like daggers, crossbows, swords, etc. Once this is done, we will have a new game that is basically playable right out of the box. And if I just go ahead and hit play, you can see that we'll actually be able to load our game right away and just start playing. Now let's take a look at some of the other wizards and see how quickly we can improve our game and make it into more of an actual game. So we'll start by adding a second level to the game. We'll go to Tools, NERPG, Wizard, and New Scene Wizard, and we will call that Second Test Scene, and we'll make it more desert-themed with some ambient wind in the background and a desert caravan for the music. And I'll go ahead and click on Create. and you can see that we now have the second test scene loaded. One of the things that the new wizards do is they add a couple of prefabs, including portals. So if I'm in the second scene and I want to get back to the first scene, I can just throw this portal into my level and we'll just stick it slightly behind the character at a Z value of negative five there. And then let's go ahead and load up the test scene, which is the first scene here. We'll save that change with the portal, and then we'll add a portal from the first level to the second level by dragging the second scene portal in. And I'll just stick that about five meters ahead of where my character's default spawn location is. So now that we have a portal to travel back and forth between the two levels, let's go ahead and choose a different 
character because uh, let's say I don't want my Uma character, I want um, some mechanism character that I downloaded. So I'm going to make a variant of the human male heavy armor character and this is this modular character set and let's say that I wanted my human male heavy armor but with no helmet. So we'll just double click on this guy right here and we will uncheck the helmet and maybe just give him some hair here. It looks like kind of a bowl cut. Let's give him some better hair here. There we go. Nice, awesome man bun here. And so I will save this and then I will use the new character wizard to actually make that as the default character for my game. So I'll go to any RPG wizard, new character wizard. And we'll pull the human male heavy armor no helmet up into the character model and I will choose the attachment profile as humanoid. This is an important step to make sure that he can equip weapons. We can choose to add the weapon attachments but in this case this character already has weapon attachments because the variant is based on a prefab that's already had them added but I will cover weapon attachments in another tutorial video. That's basically all we need to do. Other than that, I will just check the set as default player character and go ahead and click on create. And then a unit profile for this character will be created and will be set as the default character for my game. Now let's go ahead and add a cool weapon for our character. So I have downloaded this free Raven Blade asset, which you can grab on the Unity Asset Store for free. I'll have a link to that in the description. And I've already imported that into my project. You can find it under Raven Blade right here. So I will go to Tools, Any RPG Wizard, and New Weapon Wizard. I'm just going to drag the Raven Blade into the model there and I will choose the weapon slot type as a two-hand because this is going to be a two-handed sword and then the weapon type as a two-hand sword config and this will basically set up everything like the on-hit sounds and any effects as well as the proper animations for this. I'll leave the icon blank here and I will show you in a second how to actually create an icon for that. So we'll go ahead and click on create and now we have a weapon in our game. So let's open up the games folder here. And under prefab handle weapon, you'll see we have a new Raven Blade handle. Let's open that up and see how it looks. The Raven Blade is uh, much bigger than it should be, so I'm just going to shrink it down to the proper size here. Whoops, I did that on the wrong one. Uh, we want the scale to be 1-1-1 one, one, one on the Raven Blade uh, handle, and we want the Raven Blade itself shrunk down. There we go. And this handle right here is basically how the character is going to hold the weapon, the, the Z being forward, whereas knuckles are going to be curved around it, and Y being up. So we just need to now align this Raven Blade so that it is matched with the handle. And that looks about right. That's where our character is basically going to be gripping this weapon. The last thing we want to do is just make sure that the entire Raven Blade is on the equipment layer. So I'm just going to reset that and choose Yes, Change Children, and that's how we're going to be able to actually see this blade. And then I am going to go ahead and just hide the handle and exit out of that and save it. And that should be good. Lastly, I want to take a screenshot of that. So actually, I will open up the Raven Blade again and I will go to Tools, Any RPG, Wizard, 
screenshot wizard and just set the width and the height to 64. I think it's 256 by default. And then I'm going to rotate this blade slightly because weapons always look better when they're on about a 45 degree angle because they'll fill up more of the frame for the icon here. So what we're seeing here, this preview is basically where the Raven blade or where the screenshot's going to take place. So I'll go ahead and click on create. And now there's a new folder called screenshots and you can see this Raven blade here. I'm just going to set this to sprite 2D and UI. Go ahead and click on apply and now we have an icon. Now I can go into my game folder into resources and test game and item and equipment and weapon and there's my Raven blade and I can just set that icon to the Raven Blade icon that I just took the screenshot of. Finally, let's go ahead and install a character class and a faction so that we can have an enemy to fight. So I'll click on Template Content Wizard and I will add the enemy faction template. I will also add the warrior character class template. There's a lot of templates here you can install, all sorts of different character classes and different items. I'll let you explore those on your own and I will also make a video in the future um, showing all the different types of template content you can install, but for now we'll just install these two. It's going through right now and the warrior class actually has a lot of dependencies so it's going to be installing all of the different weapon skills as well as the different armor classes and the different stats that are required for a warrior, as well as a unit spawner for the warrior, a trainer for the warrior, and basically just a lot of dependencies that make this warrior class just complete and sort of easy to use out of the box. I'm going to exit from the blade handle, remembering not to save the changes because I don't want that weird rotation that I just did for the screenshot, so I'll hit discard changes here. Next, I'm going to go into the second scene. And I'm going to add a unit spawner to spawn my new warrior enemy. So let's go up and look under prefabs, under unit spawn node, character class. And I will put the Uma warrior spawn node into the scene. And I'll give it a Z value of 25, just so it's sitting a little ways away from the character and won't aggro just the second that he comes through here. Next thing I want to do is make sure that this Uma warrior is actually going to attack me. So I will go to the unit profile class, Uma warrior unit, and I'll just set his faction name to enemy to make him hostile. And finally, that Raven Blade that I added, I want to actually make that the default weapon for the Warriors. So we'll go up to Character Class here, go to Warrior Character Class, and then rather than having the Medieval Two-Hand Axe, I will use the Warrior Raven Blade as the default weapon. Let's go ahead and save this scene. And theoretically now, everything should work. If I didn't forget anything, I should just be able to press play. When I choose my new game, I can see the Raven Blade is on my warrior. I'll call him the Raven Warrior. He has the character class of Warrior which is going to give him these abilities and these traits by default. I'll go ahead and click on Start Game. Now we come into the level. We've got the portal that's going to travel to the second test scene. I can run through that portal. The second scene loads. Now you can hear maybe some desert music in the background there. And this warrior has a couple cool abilities, uh, like Reflect Damage, which allows him to reflect all damage, and a Ground Slam, and a Threatening Strike, and Double Attack by default. So let's go ahead and right-click to attack this other warrior here. 
They're going to start fighting. I can use my ground slam to stun him. And my reflect damage, and I just completely owned him because warriors can be pretty overpowered when they've got this reflect damage on. And that is how easy it is to use the new wizards that are included and the new template content to get a game up and running very, very quickly. So I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, then don't forget to subscribe to the NERPG YouTube channel. And give this video a thumbs up and a like. And I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you in the upcoming series of tutorial videos that I will be creating based on this new release, as well as adding a bunch of documentation to hopefully make this system a lot more straightforward if you're new to it and looking for tips on how to use it. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you in the next video.